I want us to go straight to the word of God this morning. Amen. And we are still, as Bishop said, we are still in the theme uh, over here, and that is advancing for conquest. And our theme verse is still Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 2. And the Bible says in my version, my, mine is the amplified version, it says this, it says, um, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now arise, take his place. Go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Hallelujah. Advancing for conquest. Allow me to just give a small subtitle. The bigger title is Advancing for Conquest. Eh? A small title, I'm going to tell you this one. Don't blow it. Hallelujah. You can put your name there, Joseph, or Whitney, or Bosoben, or Peter, or Andrew, comma, don't blow it. Can you say that together with me? Okay, let's say it. Now put your name and say, don't, one more time. Now look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, don't blow it. Don't blow it. Hallelujah. Now just in a minute, you know, Bible says that Israel actually blew it. They blew it. Bible says in Genesis 12 and 7, God speaks to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, where you are right now, that land you're standing on, I'm going to give your descendants. You shall come back here, and where you are, I will give it to you. Fast forward, God speaks to Moses, and he says, I want you to take these people to a land that I promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so Moses begins the journey from Egypt, and he brings out Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. All the way, and they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. And they saw the hand of God. How God delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh. And they crossed over to the other side. And while they were in the wilderness, in preparation to stepping into the promise that God gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're in the wilderness on transit. They've come from the place of bondage. They're about to enter the promised land. So they're in between. But while in transit, they began to complain. They began to murmur. They walked in disobedience. They walked in anger. And what happened? The promise that God had given Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, even Moses himself, did not enter the promised land. They blew it. And I did some small research. I realized that more around one million people died in the wilderness on transition. Because the Bible says that anyone that has 20 years and above was not forbidden to enter the promised land. They died. So those who are below 20 years are the ones who are able to enter the promised land. And it's only Joshua and Caleb who are able to enter the promised land. All others who are above 20 years old died in the wilderness because of complaining, because of murmuring, because of disobedience. Don't blow it. Hallelujah. Don't blow it. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we honor you this morning, even for the privilege of getting to your word. Bible says the grass will wither, the flowers will fade, but the word of God will remain and stand forever. Lord, as we are here this morning, I pray, speak to us, O oh God. Use my vocal cords to communicate what you want us to hear this morning. I may not be as eloquent, Heavenly Father, but use this tongue of mine to be able to speak your word in Jesus' mighty name. May the church be edified, may God be glorified, and may the enemy be terrified. Father, we thank you and we bless you. To God be the glory, to God be the praise. And somebody shout a big amen. Come on, shout a big amen. amen. As you go down to your seat, tell neighbor, neighbor, don't blow it. 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 And you can take your seat in Jesus' name. Don't blow it. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Reverend Joyce, for allowing us again to be here and to share God's word. God bless you so much. Amen. Now, many years ago, I think almost 15 years ago, 
or more. Um, a friend of ours came to us and told us there is an opportunity to do some investment. And so he took us to some place. Bundus, a remote place, you know, in the middle of nowhere. We got there and all we could see is just trucks of, of, of grass and land and like a small, like a small structure somewhere very far. And we were told that is, it was a, a police post. And so he told us, we have an opportunity here to invest. And he was telling us, you know, this, this place here is a highway. <laughs> I mean, you could not see, but he's saying, and this road is a, a bypass, a serious road that goes from here all the way to Thika. I said, ah, okay. You see that corner? There are going to be malls and buildings and structures in that corner. I said, okay. We're not seeing anything. And he said, <laughs> so at, at the end of the day, when he had tried to convince us and he spoke, and, and he spoke with many, many words, but I told him, sir, thank you so much for taking time to bring us here. You're a good man and a good friend. Unfortunately, this is the middle of nowhere. We are not convinced that we need to invest here. But thank you so much. We appreciate. Went back home. The money we had, I think we bought some onions and some meat and uh, disappeared. We, we blew the money. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of years later, actually many years later, we are standing in this place about to enter into a meeting and it hit us that this is the same same place many years ago somebody told us to invest but we never invested. And we were there looking, and guess what, what we are seeing ahead of us? GCI Utawala. We were standing next to GCI Utawala. And you ask yourself, can you imagine if we had just invested in this land? We would not be smiling all the way to the bank. Some of these tax issues will not be too heavy on us right now. I'm telling you, we missed out on an investment. How many of us today here have actually missed out on opportunities? Yeah? And we miss out because of probably procrastination, lack of vision. Or we're waiting for the perfect time, the perfect season. And in the process, we miss out on an opportunity that would have changed our lives. That's what happened to Israel. They missed out on an opportunity. Praise the Lord. Can I talk to some brothers in the house today? Praise the Lord, brothers. Especially the ones in the battlefield. Hallelujah. Our sister's been, you know, appearing and you're in the same growth center. And you come here for prayer meeting and you see her. Hallelujah. And sometimes you even walk her home. And you fellowship, you know. And you lift your voice and you thank God for his, God's goodness and faithfulness. And you're there. And when you see her, your heart, you know, in a way, there's a way your heart feels when you are next to her. But you're saying nothing. <laughs> you're just there. And then one day she comes and I tell you, brother, you know, pray with me. Pray with me. That brother, somebody has actually asked me if I could walk with him down the aisle. Please pray with me. Just petition with me that the Lord may, may hear and answer this prayer. How would you react? <laughs> you have just missed an opportunity. Praise the Lord. Beloved, God has spoken to us. We are advancing and we're going to conquer. 2024. Let us not blow it. Let us not miss the opportunity that God has presented along our way. Praise God. And thank God because the Bible says that the Lord that we serve is a God of time and chance. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says this. Again, I saw under the, the sun, the race is not to the swift. 
nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to those with knowledge. But time and chance happens to everybody. God is a God of time and God of chance. God of opportunity. And I want to tell you, child of God, this year, God is giving us an opportunity. I don't know about last year, many things happened last year, but I'm so certain because God wants us to advance and God wants us to conquer. He has created an opportunity. He has created a platform and we cannot blow it. Someone say, don't blow it. Don't blow it. Hallelujah. Because God is waiting for us to arise and be able to take the land for him. Praise the name of Jesus. Time and chance happens to everybody. I discovered some time back that every born again spirit filled believer, wherever you are, it doesn't matter your level of education. It doesn't matter where you stay. It doesn't matter your family background. But every born again spirit filled believer will always have an opportunity to rise. In the village or in the city, it doesn't matter. If you have the spirit of God within you, God will always create an opportunity for you to arise and to progress. Amen. We must progress. We must advance. Somebody say, don't blow it. Someone shout, don't blow it. Lift your hand and say, oh God, in 2024, every opportunity that you bring my way, help me. To maximize. Help me to maximize. Help me not to blow it. In Jesus' mighty name. There's a king in the Bible. Second Kings chapter 5, 13. And verse 15 and 19. Second Kings 13, 15 and 19. There's a king called King Josh. He went to visit uh, Elisha the prophet. Elisha was about to die. And so he went to see this man of God. When he got to where the man of God was, the man of God began to give King Joash some instructions. I won't go into details, but let's read verse 19. Second Kings chapter 13 and verse 19. Okay, let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. It says, and he said, now, the prophet Elisha is talking to the king Joash. Elisha is about to die. He's about to disappear. So he's giving instruction to this man because this man came to him for instructions. He tells him this. He says, and he said, take the arrow. And he took them and he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground with them. And he struck three times and he did what? He stopped. Next verse. Then the man of God was angry. With him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. But now, uh -huh. but now you will strike down Syria only you had an opportunity to completely destroy Syria. But you blew it. Now you only destroy Syria in portion. Syria will still survive because you missed an opportunity. Beloved, this year we must not miss the opportunity. There are some questions I began to ask myself and I thought I would tell us by the end of this service but let me just bring them forward. Some questions I began to ask myself when I was preparing for this message. Let me just ask us, if you have a pen or paper, this is what I told myself. You could also write if you don't mind. I told myself, when is the last time I radically obeyed God's word? When is the last time I radically obeyed God's word? You could ask yourself that same question. The second question I ask myself is this. How would my life look like how would my life look like if I decided to radically obey the word of God? How would my life look like if I would decide to radically obey the word of God? 
Last but not least. How would it look like if I allowed God to fully lead me? How would it look like if I would allow God to fully lead me? These are questions I asked myself and I told myself I have to purpose this year. Whatever it takes to make sure I advance by fully following the Lord. I said I must not blow it this year. Israel blew it. Had an opportunity to step into the promised land but they blew it. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse number 2 where we just read. It says that Moses my servant is dead. So now arise take his place. Go over to this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Joshua, Moses is dead. Moses is no more. Moses is gone. His chapter is what? Closed. He has done what he was supposed to do. He has finished his purpose. He has gone. Now it is your turn. In other words, this is now who what? An opportunity. For Joshua. Now we're not talking about people dying here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But death in the Bible is always a picture or a symbol or representation of separation. Every time you see death, it talks about separation from two things or from something. Every time, and every time you think about separation, Unfortunately, it's always on the negative. True or false? You say, separate yourselves from sin. Separate yourself from filth. From ungodliness. From wickedness. You know. From all kinds of evil. Separate yourself. But sometimes, separation is not only a negative, but also is a positive thing. Can I prove to you? Bible says in Genesis that God separated the heavens from the earth. God separated darkness from light. God separated day from night. God separated animals from humans. That's a good thing. God separated male from female. As a matter of fact, everyone in this place today, right now, you are a product of a separation. Can I prove to you? Once upon a time, you were in your mother's womb. And for you to appear on the face of the earth, there had to be a separation. They had to cut the umbilical cord for you to be separated from your mother. And it's interesting because that separation became the basis of a new life. In other words, sometimes for there to be new life, sometimes for there to be something new, there has to be a separation. I felt so strongly that as long as Moses was alive, Joshua would never have risen. There had to be some level of separation so that Joshua would rise and be able to take the land for God. There had to be a separation. Sometimes we mature when there is separation. Many years ago when I was sent to India to go and study, I never imagined I would survive. But the fact that I was separated from my family, that is when I discovered God. Amen. For myself, all along I would depend upon my people here to feed me, to nourish me. But the moment I was separated, that's when I began to seek God for my own self. So I grew, I matured by reason of what? A separation. Bible says a man shall leave his father and his mother. You shall be separated from your father and mother and be clinged to his wife. Reason why sometimes we have people that have not yet grown, sorry to say this, is because we have refused the separation. We are still hung up and connected mother. 
Behold, I do a new thing. It shall spring forth. This is the old. For there to be maturity, for there to be a new family, there's got to be some form of separation. And I see here a separation. As long as Mo Moses was alive. In fact, Bishop, I don't know. You know, I read a scripture in Jude. I think Jude. And I, you'll help me. I don't know why the enemy and the angel of God was contending for the body of Moses. Moses is dead. Can you imagine the devil and the angel of God? They are fighting for a dead body. I am yet to understand why. Hallelujah. They are content. This is the body of this man is God. I mean, this man is dead. But they are fighting. They are contending for a dead body. Praise the Lord. I don't know. <laughs> but the point is this. I felt, people of God, there's got to be some form of separation. Moses was a man that would talk to God. And Moses would come down and begin to disseminate what he received from God. And so Joshua was just there waiting to receive from Moses. But there got to be a place where but Joshua now had to depend upon God. Had to trust God for direction. God made sure that he had to remove this individual that was in between him and Joshua, which is Moses. There has to be a separation. I mean, right now, we are in a season of separation. Praise the Lord. We are praying and fasting. You are separating yourself from the normal routine of eating. Or you're not fasting. Praise the Lord. So now you have changed how you partake your meals. Huh? Others are fasting and not eating anything. Others are eating only vegetables. Others are eating one meal a day. Others not eating anything a day. But there's a level of separation. You are separating yourself for what? For advancement. What, what, why are you fasting? Why are we fasting? We are, we are trusting God to separate ourselves so that we can be able to advance. And advance what? Spiritually. We want our eyes to open. And so we need to separate ourselves from food to be able to be more sensitive. When God speaks, we are able to hear. There's a level of separation. That's a good thing. Unless there is a separation, hey, there may not be an advancement. Moses had to be out of the picture for Joshua to step in and begin to rise and take the land. God is a God of opportunities. And this year, God is creating opportunities. But the question is this, what am I willing to separate to be able to advance? Beloved, if we do what we did last year, this, as Rev said, will just be another wonderful cliche, advancing for conquest. Another lovely statement, we are advancing for conquest. Unless I choose to separate myself from something that I used to do last year or the previous year. It will be the same story. I think somebody told me, somebody said something, that a fool is a person who does the same thing and expects a different result. Yes, a fool, not me. He says that a fool is somebody who does the same, same thing and expects a different result. This year, ask yourself, what are you willing to separate from to advance. For Joshua and for, uh, for, for God, Moses had to be out of the picture for this man to say, it's time to rise. I have no choice. Separation. Praise God. Let me give you three things very quickly and very basic. We're still in the foundational stage. Very quick, uh, basic and very fundamental. Three things that have been mentioned here. Allow me to just repeat it. Three things that I believe apart from separating yourself that I believe were fundamental in causing Joshua to advance and to take the land and to conquer. Three things that are going to help us not to blow it. Amen. If we can be able to take these three things, I can tell you for a fact, child of God, we will have a different story by the close of the year. We will not blow it. Three things. Number one is that Joshua had God's promises. Joshua had God's 
promises. He had a promise. Number two, Joshua had God's plan. And number three, Joshua had God's presence. The three P's. He had the promises of God. Joshua stuck with the plan of God. And Joshua had the presence of God. Beloved, that is the key. This year, if you can just stick with that and say, Lord, this is your plan. We will stick to the plan. We have the promises of God. This is what you said. And we have your presence. You are with us. Let me tell you, we will advance. And we shall conquer. The first point, Joshua had the promises. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 and 5 says this. This is what God told Joshua. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that shall have I given unto you. As I promised Moses for the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and the great Mediterranean Sea of the West shall be your territory. No man shall have, shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. God knew that for Joshua to be successful, to enter the land and to conquer, he needed to get, give him something. He had to get some promise. God knew the land was full of established people, as we had here. The land was not a virgin land. It was occupied. There are people in the land. There are Jebusites, you know, Hevites, Canaanites, even those who eat tithe. Eatertites. Were there. Do you eat tithe? Okay. Either tithe were there. <laughs> so Joshua, God knew that for me to allow this guy to go, I need to give him some promises. Joshua had to get some confidence for him to go forth. Promises of God are the things that give us confidence, they give us an assurance. But even though things may be difficult, God spoke. What promises do, they give you assurance and confidence. But even though the things are looking dark and they're looking grim, God spoke. The other day I was leaving from the house and then my daughter was there and she was crying, crying. Oh, don't leave, don't leave. So I told her, don't worry. When I, don't, don't, don't cry. If you don't cry, when I come back, I'll come with three lollipops. Three. One is red, one is green, and one is orange. So you could see. She's trying to compose herself. Because she knows there is what? A promise. If I don't cry, if I compose myself, by the end of the day, when that comes in, I'll have three lollipops. And so what happens? That promise gave her confidence. That whatever he said... Uh, let me hold on. Let me not cry. I will balance my tears. But I know at the end of the day, when I hear him hoot, I know he's coming with my lollipops. When God speaks to us, when God gives the promise, it is to give you confidence. But do you know what? Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil because God is with you. What he promised will come to pass. We said here that the, the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he says, it must come to pass. He says he has exalted his word above any of his name. If he said it, he will do it. Amen. Promises come to enhance our confidence in God. Amen. Joshua said, oh, God, you've spoken. Fine, I have your promise. I have your promise. That's why many times when I find myself in difficult positions, I just pick the scripture. I say, Lord, it is in your word. Bible says in Psalms 91 and verse number 14, 15, it says it's because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him. Because he knows my name, when he calls to me, I will answer him. 
I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him. Lord, this is your word. This is your promise you said in your word. Right now I'm in trouble. Now fulfill your promise. You said it, fulfill it. Bible says in Psalms 46 and verse 1 to 3, it says that God is our refuge. God is my refuge. God is my refuge. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. So when I'm in trouble, I say, God, you are my refuge. According to the promises of God, you are my refuge and my strength. My very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear Though the earth give way, though the mountains be removed into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble and its swelling, I will not be moved because you are my refuge and my strength. Amen. Promises come to strengthen our confidence in God. Without a promise, it's hard to move. So God had to give Joshua promises. And so Joshua had the promises of God. That's why he could be able to advance. Because God had spoken. What has God spoken to you? What are those promises that God has given unto you? Those are the promises that will keep you in times of trouble. The promises of God. The second thing is not only that God, Joshua had God's promises, but number two, Joshua had the presence of of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. It says this. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. What an assurance. With an assurance, my presence will go with you. Listen, Moses, the man you are depending upon, is gone. But I'm here. Hallelujah. 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 I'm here. Listen, the breakthroughs, the instructions, the open doors that you received through Moses, I was a man behind him. I am I am unchanging. People come and go. Circumstances come and go. But I'm unchanging. So listen, Joshua. I will be with you. Amen. It doesn't matter what you go through. I will be with you. The same, same grace that I showed Moses. The same, same breakthroughs I showed Moses. Are the same, same breakthroughs I'm going to show you. Because I am the same God. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And this is the God that we serve, people of God. The same God that was with Joshua. Same God that was with Moses and Abraham is the same God that is with us today. And guess what? He's not only with us today. He is in us. Hallelujah. Because you are better covenant. Bible says when she, Jesus died and he rose from the dead. When you are sending into heaven. He says, let me go that I may release the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost came, landed on the disciples in the book of Acts, at some point Paul says, now the same spirit that was in Christ Jesus now dwells in us. God is not only with us, but God is in us. Everywhere you go, God is with you and God is inside you. That's why the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So these giants you see here today, they are not greater than the God that is inside you. So you need to get a place where you realize the one inside you. I like what the Bible says that, 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 that you, this, these earthen vessels have a treasure inside it. Listen to me. You have a treasure inside you. You are holding treasure inside you. God, the Father, is inside you. The Holy Ghost is inside you. What can't you do? What can't you do? I mean, David looked at the Go Go Goliath. And he looked at him. And he looked at his God. And I like saying this. David looked and he said, this man is too big to miss. Others say, this man is too big to fight. David saw, this man is too big to miss. He understood God is with me. And the God that is with me is a God of all creation. This God will help me 
to bring down this man. Beloved, God is in us. Let's not blow it. God is in us. Let's not blow it. We must advance and conquer. This year, we must advance in spiritual matters. This year, we must advance in our businesses. This year, we must advance financially. Hallelujah. We must advance in our careers. We must advance in what God has promised us. We must advance. Why? We have the promises of God. Why? We have the presence of God. The presence of the Almighty God is in us. We, we don't have to go to some mountains even to pray. Like what the Bible says in John. The Samaritan had no idea. They're saying, you know, you people worship on the mountain. But Jesus says that God is spirit. And those who worship him might do so in spirit and in truth. God is no longer limited in a place. God lives inside you. Everywhere you go, God is with you. Why would you blow it? And yet Jehovah is inside us. Why? Last but not least, Joshua was able to conquer and advance because first of all, he had the promises of God, which we have. He had the assurance of God's presence, which you also have. But last but not least, he stuck to the plan of God. Friends, we must stick to the plan of God. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. We've read this before here. But let me just do it again. Joshua 1, 8. He says this. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Friends, the plan of God is the word of God. Period. That is the plan of God. If we stick to the plan of God, let me tell you, success is guaranteed. And not just success. The Bible says good success. You want good success? You want to progress? It is scripture. It is the word of God. Psalm chapter 1. And verse 1 and verse 3. Let's read that. Psalm chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 3. One or two scriptures and then we close. Psalm chapter 1 and from verse 1. It says this. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Next verse. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law that he that do what? Exactly what God told who? Joshua. That in the law you shall do what? Meditate. Day and night. Why day and night? So that the first thing you do in the morning, you read a scripture. That scripture takes you the whole day. When you go to sleep in the night, read a scripture. That scripture keeps you as you're sleeping. So the last thing you see before you sleep is scripture. The first thing you, 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 you read before you leave the house is scripture. In the morning and in the evening and the entire day. And not just reading. The Bible says you do what? Meditate. I'm sure Rev will help us to define this. But reading is different from meditating. I believe our bishop is a meditator. If that's a, <laughs> all of that. Because you can read a scripture here and you wonder where he got that scripture from. Because if you read a scripture, not once or twice or three times or four times, your eyes will open. What happened? That scripture becomes alive. Many times we just read the Bible like a storybook. But the instructions and the plan was not just read day and night. But you do what? Meditate. Meditate day in and day out. And once you meditate, you must be able to do exactly what the Word of God tells us to do. Stick to the plan. I love what the Bible says in Psalms, Psalms 119 and verse 97. Psalms 119 and verse 97. Maybe the last scripture. Psalms 119, verse 97. 
Oh, how love I thy law. It is my what? My meditation all the day. Next verse. Though through thy commandment has made me. Who wants to be wiser than his enemy here? Why is it? He says, by your commandments and by meditating on your word, you have made me wiser than my enemies. Uh -huh. For they are ever with me. Next verse. I have what? More understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my. Next verse. Huh? I understand more than the ancient because what? Are you seeing the plan of God? You want understanding. You want to be wise. You want success. More than your enemies, wise than teachers. It is all in the meditation of the word of God. Beloved, there can never be an advancement if there is no separation. If we are going to step in and advance, we must understand the promises of God. Understand that his presence is with us and we must stick to the plan of God. Then we shall be able to advance and conquer in Jesus' name. Let's rise on our feet.